I've been using iPadOS 26 for over three months now, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my long-term experience of using iPadOS 26 on my M4 iPad Pro, which continues to be my main productivity machine. I ran the developer beta of iPadOS 26 right when Apple released it after WWDC. The first few betas came with a fair share of bugs and glitches, but now that iPadOS 26 is officially released for everyone worldwide, all of those rough edges have been ironed out. For a software that got quite an overhaul, the experience has been smooth and very reliable. When I made the switch from my MacBook to the M4 iPad Pro last year, I uploaded a lot of videos sharing what that transition was like. Back then, I often said that the Mac and iPad are two different experiences by design. One is a full-on productivity powerhouse, while the other is a modern-day computer optimized for touch and versatility. And now, three months into iPadOS 26, I can say more confidently than ever before that iPad can serve as a full Mac replacement, not for everyone, but for most people. And I'll explain exactly why I believe that shortly. I'll also go over a few things that I really do wish that iPadOS 26 had after using it day in and day out. But first, let's quickly touch on design because the new liquid glass look and feel is absolutely beautiful. The translucency and animations are quite delightful, but I must admit that when I first installed iPadOS 26, I actually didn't find that big of a difference. Like, it looked nice, but not drastically different. But over the last three months, every time I go back to a device that's not running iPadOS 26, the difference becomes striking. iPads without liquid glass feel older and somehow dated, but with it, everything feels more vibrant and modern. And it's one of those subtle upgrades that really sticks with you the longer you use it. But now with the design aside, let's move on to the productivity features, which is the real story behind iPadOS 26. The number one upgrade continues to be proper windowing. iPad started life as a single single task device with one app filling the entire screen. And then over time, we got slide over and split view, which worked but felt limited compared to the Mac. Then came Stage Manager, which added flexibility, but still wasn't quite enough. With iPadOS 26, however, that changes. We finally get full control of window sizing and positioning, and it feels just like it does on a Mac. You can now open multiple apps, arrange them however you want, resize them freely, and even overlay them. Now there is a cap of 12 apps at once, but honestly, even on a Mac, I never really had 12 windows open simultaneously, so 12 is more than enough. However, if there was a larger, perhaps a 14-inch iPad in the future, maybe that would be even nicer. But who knows, that's just wishful thinking right now. Now, one view that I did find myself using a lot is the quadrant mode, where you have four apps perfectly divided across the screen. It's neat, it's organized, and it makes true multitasking a reality. Also, this is all made possible by Apple bringing over the familiar traffic light icons from the Mac, red to close, yellow to minimize, and green to resize and reorient. With a single tap of the green button, you get different layout options without having to drive things around manually. Three months in, this system has become second nature to me and I can't even imagine multitasking without it. I'm so glad Apple brought this. And to be honest, I really wasn't expecting it. And another feature that I didn't expect to come to iPadOS 26 was the menu bar, which has turned out to be one of the most valuable additions to iPadOS. Before Apple's keep it clean and minimal approach sometimes made things frustrating. Too many keyboard shortcuts or endless taps just to complete basic actions. But with the menu bar, everything is right there when you hover at the top. It pops up with shortcuts and tools instantly and it just works. It almost made me wonder after using iPadOS 26 that why was the menu bar and the traffic light icons not a part of iPadOS from the get-go? Craig Federighi did mention in an interview that while Apple wants to keep the Mac and iPad different, certain features that work really well on one platform can and should be brought to the other. That's exactly what's happened here. Yes, the Mac and iPad are still unique, but now they share some DNA that makes iPadOS far more advanced without losing what makes it special. Combine that with the improvements to the Files app, like dragging folders to the dock, labeling them with emojis, color coding them, customizing views, setting default apps, and having the new preview app for PDFs, file management on the iPad finally feels professional. There's now a go-to folder option. So if you know the exact file path, you can type it in and go straight there. For example, if you're working on client projects that are buried three folders deep, you can skip the clicks and land right where you need to be. You can now toggle between icons, list, 
auric columns. Icons are perfect for visual people, so it's great if you're browsing design mockups or images. List view is better when you've got long file names or need details like size and modification date. And you can even resize columns if you're managing music files, for example. You can stretch the artist column to see the full names. And then columns view is my personal go-to because if you're working with deeply nested folders, say an archive of documents, you can see each level side by side like on macOS Finder. Now you can add color-coded tags or even emojis to folder names. For example, maybe you've got a folder for video, so you could add a video emoji and make it green. But now, when I'm working on a video, I just open up my downloads folder in the dock and I drag the file into my app. It's literally all one tap away, no more digging through layers of files. And you can view them as a grid or fan right from the dock itself. On images, you can quickly rotate markup, convert to PDF. Well, if you have an image and you just want to remove the background, in seconds, you can do that. On PDFs, you get instant options to markup or even optimize the file size, which is great if you're emailing documents and don't want to send a giant file. On top of that, the new journaling app has become one of my favorite additions. It feels right at home on the iPad, especially with the Apple Pencil. The big display is perfect for jotting down quick notes, sketches, and thoughts. After three months, I can't imagine not having it there. But like I I said in the very beginning of this video that though I am very impressed with iPadOS 26 and it has transformed the way I do work, after living with iPadOS 26 for three months, there are still a few things missing that keeps it from being perfect. And I have mentioned this in prior videos. And the first thing is clamshell mode. With a MacBook, you can connect an external monitor, close the lid, and just keep working. On the iPad, however, the moment you close the lid, everything just shuts off. It makes the usage of an external monitor more cumbersome than it needs to be. I really wish Apple would fix this. The second thing is plugin support. Yes, we finally do have pro apps like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro on the iPad, but they're still sort of watered down. On Mac, plugins take those apps to the next level, adding transitions, effects, and more. And on the iPad, there's no real way to install them. It feels like a missed opportunity, and it keeps the iPad versions of these apps from truly being pro. The third thing, and this might be a little controversial, is multi-user support. This one does make more sense the longer I use the iPad. Now, unlike an iPhone, an iPad is often shared in families, whether it's with parents, kids, or even coworkers. Macs and even Apple TVs have multi-user support, but the question is, why not the iPad? Even a simple guest mode would go a long way in protecting personal information while letting someone else use your iPad. So final thoughts. After three months, this is where I stand. iPadOS 26 has completely reshaped my workflow. The liquid glass design upgrades, multitasking improvements, menu bar, file management, and new apps like Journal and Preview have all stuck as part of my daily use. And yes, clamshell mode, plugins, and multi-user support are still missing. And yes, it's not a Mac replacement for everyone. If you're into coding or programming or you need specialized software that is only available for the Mac, then the Mac is still the way to go. But for the average consumer, and especially for those in the creative fields, I truly do believe that iPad with iPadOS 26 is now a full computer, not just a companion device, but something that can truly stand on its own. It's not just a content consumption device, it's a content creation device just as much. So it's been over a year of me using the M4 iPad Pro as my main machine, and I always loved it, but now I love it even more with iPadOS 26. But the question is, what about you? Do you think iPadOS 26 has has finally made the iPad a true computer or do you still feel that the Mac is irreplaceable? Let me know your thoughts and your questions in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and for all things Apple, productivity and more, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and I'll see you in the next one.